once it's done, it's done though, you know? Bell range, come on now, all right. There we go. All right, so listen, describe PSJ's developmental stages we discussed last Tuesday in class. Three stages. Give examples of behaviors and characteristics. They hate you, man. Just copy and paste from your notes. What? <laughs> you work smarter, not harder. Gee dang it. All right, so Dylan, if you're watching, we have a current event for Friday. I emailed him too, just in case he's not liking subscribing. How would you even survive in this platform line if you're not Right? Google. Just kidding. Hopefully not. It's a little chilly in here, don't you think? It's always cold in here. <sighs> Nothing was working. Internet wasn't working. Really? It was working for me. Yeah, you guys it was slow. Oh. Well, he has all those pieces of tech up there fogging up all the Wi Fi. Got a lot of vocab terms for you, so I apologize. We did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. American history guys got pounded with them. Yep. Russian Revolution. Man. Which one? Second period? Yeah. Roy was in it, right? Yeah, yeah it's second period. That's my remote. No. That's my remote American history. So I have some here and I have three come out. Yeah. Tegan's class is a hoot. Let me tell you. Yeah. What? At four. At four, American history, psych, social, and government. Yeah, it stinks preparing for it. I'm going to have a word with Mr. Henninger about this. He's my department head. He's the one who plans it out. Slammed the door on me. Yay, slammed the door on me. Just want to talk about milk. 2%, 1%, <laughs> oh, who knows? Kim, almond? He likes almond? I like almond. Oh, oh, no, that's I like right. Oh. Uh, that's all my girlfriend gets at Duncan. Oat. Oat milk. Goat milk. It's better milk. <laughs> Oh, I had a big glass when I got home, by the way. I was thinking of you. Yeah. When I got home, like, oh. Should have threw some Oreos in there, too. It does taste watery. I think it's gross. Oh. I don't know. It's like the same consistency, but I think it's watery. It's not like. I think too. Yeah. I don't drink it like all I like 2%. I like them all, but. I don't like drink all. I don't know about skin, though. I don't know. I think I'm lactose. Okay. good? We good? We need more time? Oh, I just thought you were copy and paste them over. I have to type what I see. I copy and paste it over and then rewrite it. All yeah. right, sorry. You rewrite it. <laughs> well, I can't just keep bullet points for my answer. Yes, you can. No, you cannot. <laughs> well, I'm coming around <laughs> checking. I'm going to make note of that. I think it's already almost near as much. <laughs> See that they're gonna make three other Spider-Man movies after this. Yeah, awesome. yeah. 
I'll, I'll definitely be your age. Or around <laughs> 20. Yeah, but I'll be in a wheelchair, so you're going to have to push me around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Tim, here's T. Oh, Spider-Man. Oh, you're only a couple more Hey, okay, here you go. PJ's <laughs> developmental stages. So I thought it was important to throw in this just because uh, many psychologists, sociologists, uh, they agree with this developmental stages and uh, how this is a viewpoint in psychology. If you take me next semester for psych, uh, we'll talk about this again. But uh, <clears throat> I think it's important to talk about this since we just mentioned about feral children and how nurture does play a huge aspect in development, right? And socialize, socialization, okay? How culture does play a huge factor into how people really interact and how they have characteristics, personalities, okay? And it's just not based off of nature alone, right? And we talked about how nature versus nurture is that big discussion, right? And I think we all focused then and, and all agree that nurture plays a bigger role in that development, but it's still shared, okay? All right, so what do we have here? First stage of Piaget's developmental stages. What was the first stage we talked about? What was the first stage? Oh, geez, thought everybody copy and paste it over. Oh, we all know it. No hands up though. Madden, what's the first stage? Oh my gosh. Sensory motor stage. Yeah. What age? What age is here? Okay. All right. Yeah, good. So zero to two. And uh, what are some of the characteristics here in a sensory motor stage? So this is the first stage of development that he talked about that he described within his theory, Jean Piaget. Sensory motor. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Yeah. So all, all the time, babies are looking around trying to grab things, put things in their mouth. Uh, you know, a lot of their toys are based off of noises and flashing lights and many colors. And there's a reason for it because the senses are trying to make sense of their senses. That sounds funny, doesn't it? Making sense of their senses. Yeah, anyway, sensory motor stage, crawling around, grabbing things, touching things, um, constantly putting things in their mouth constantly. Oh, yeah. I think that stage is kind of gross to be honest. What are you doing? It's a pandemic here. Here you are putting things in your mouth. I am afraid to hold babies. I'm just like, yeah, take them, take them back. Like, I'm not afraid of them. Like, yeah. What are you looking at, huh? Yeah, exactly. Wow. So we're actually going to talk about the looking glass self today, and how that's a perspective of our uh, our personality and ourselves. So, man. Look at you, already bringing up something we're going to talk yeah, about. Yeah, Good for you. Yeah. I thought I was funny the other day. My, I have a friend who's like two years old, and she was like, his mom sent me a video of him saying happy birthday, Madden. And later that night, they come to our house, and they woke him up right before, like the same thing that, and they woke him up to go. And when they woke him up, he goes, I hate Madden's birthday. Oh. <laughs> they knew he had to come over. Wow. Taking away from his toys, I guess. Too much time. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so what else is involved in this stage here? Huh? Yeah, good job. Object permanence, right? Okay, so how, uh, you know, peekaboo is something that babies always like to play. It's like, oh, they disappear. They're out of my eyesight. That means they must be gone. They must disappear. No, you big idiot. They're just behind your hands, right? Yeah. What's that? Hey, watch it, watch it. I'm recording here. I know, I know. But anyway, with toys, a lot of times with toys, you hide underneath the blanket and the object's gone. Well, they pull it out from the blanket. They're like, whoa, what do you do? You're a magician. Then they laugh. Then they laugh and giggle and maybe fart. Yeah, yeah, good. Or the nose bubble, the snot bubbles come out. Gross. Let's go to stage. Get off your phone back there. I haven't seen you in a while. You're like a ghost. And here you are on your phone. What's the next stage? Yeah, okay. I am. Chris? Okay. This is like a bribe. Yeah, seriously. Next stage. Actually, I'm not going to give it to you next time. Next stage is pre operational. Pre operational stage. Okay, good job. What's the age span there? 
Toddlerhood. Toddlerhood. I don't think I've ever said that when I was explaining the operational stage. Two to seven years old. Two to seven, yeah. Copy and paste it. Go ahead and do it again. Rather than fully understand the concepts of it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Two to seven. Good job. So yeah, we talk about object permanence. In this stage, they're realizing that you just can't hide the toy or hide the object. It's there, right? It just doesn't disappear. And uh, what else involved with this stage here? Go ahead, Leah. Ask why. Ask why. I'm sure we all have an example of that or experienced it, whether it's a kid. Why? 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 After why? Every single thing lost in the why? Why? Don't you talk why? Yeah, so that gets annoying after a while. That gets annoying after a while. That's uh, definitely characterizing that stage, the pre-operational. What else? <clears throat> what else? So page two to seven. Yes, egocentric, right? And what does that mean, Sarah? The world revolves around them. Yeah, good job. So that they can't actually put themselves in other people's shoes, that they experience the world, that they believe everybody else experienced the world through their own eyes. And that's not the case at all. But that's the only way that it can relate to experiences, stimulus, right? Uh, different types of reasoning. Uh, it's all through their own eyes. They can't really put themselves in other people's shoes. Good. So they don't know other perspectives. Leah? I don't agree with that at all. Why? Because I have cousins that are four and six, and they like ask me why sometimes. Really? It cannot wow. Agree. And they also know that objects aren't gone mm -hmm. under their blanket. <clears throat> at age two? She's, she's, I said four. I know, but in that stage, you're starting to realize it. Yeah. yeah. But they're not all about these other people. They know other people are gross too. Yeah. So when you go to the grocery store, or not the grocery store, the uh, uh, Walmart, oh, I want a toy. I want a toy. They throw a hissy fit if they don't get it. <laughs> oh, I mean, I throw a fit like that too when I don't get what I want. Stop my shoes and like run off. Like, I literally like, there. Yeah. Like, and he literally like cushions on like move out of my way. Beat it. That's a, lose it. move it or lose it, sister. Yeah, good job. Good job. So intuitive stage two, right? So imaginary friends. They think objects could come to life. You guys ever see the movie Toy Story? Yeah. They also like was it your imaginary friend saying beep beep? Beep beep, yeah. 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 Beep, Don't beep. talk crap on beep beep. <laughs> He's only fed milk his whole life. <laughs> Sarah would laugh if she heard that. Yeah, so imaginary friends are real. Objects are real. They have an emotional tie, a connection to certain objects. And I know I sometimes went, well, at my dad's house when we were moving, I was throwing some things away, some old trophies. I'm like, oh, no. And then I had the Bat Cave when I was little, this huge Batman play set, and I found it in the attic. I'm like, no way. And you took it home. I did. And got I didn't play with it, but I just looked at it. My girlfriend's like, why? Now it's just going to take up space at our house. Well, I love it. Yeah, true. True. Might be a little older at that time. All right, there we go. So age two to seven, free operation. What's the next one here? What's the next one? Roy, go ahead. What does that mean? Concepts attached to Deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning, what does that mean? Math magician? Switch the light switch on the light switch. Yeah, there you go. They figure out buttons. They're like, oh, well, if I turn this on, it turns off. I know a bunch of kids sitting there. They're going to show five. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> but they start reasoning and understanding that, you know, maybe there's a little bit more. There's still egocentrism there, but not as much, right? They had that age are starting to fade away a little bit from that. Uh, a little bit more of mathematical reasoning, reading, writing ability, obviously. Uh, the imagination stage is kind of going away, unless you're a huge Marvel fan, right, Roy? Yeah. Chris, you too. Yeah. Still believe that superheroes are real. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. What else is involved in that stage? Go ahead, Leah. Yep, talked about that. Uh, maybe branching out from their own family, so reaching more peers, maybe uh, more emotional relationships, okay, uh, within that age groups from 7 to 11. 7-Eleven, favorite gas station. 
It's Joseph. All right, last stage. What do we have? Keegan, were you here for this? Oh, for some reason, I didn't think you're back with your wisdom teeth. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, what is that? What, what, what's describing this stage here? 12 until you die, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. So this is uh, rational thing, critical thing, creative thinking. Uh, this is uh, really uh, branching out emotionally, okay? Um, forming friend groups, peer groups, assembling into groups that are associated with your own, and uh, really thinking outside of the box. Okay, good. Good job. Good job. Is there any questions on Piaget's developmental stages? Again, I think it's important understanding the nurture aspect of sociology. And uh, you know, that's a good example of the feral children that we talked about, you guys read about. Was that on Tuesday? I think we went over on Wednesday. I think that's all we did on the half day, was go over that reading. Who's fed milk? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so terms for today, here we go. I don't know if we'll get through everything because that took a little bit longer than I thought, but it is what it is. What it is? Oh, large list. How about we just go through a few? Yep. So there's uh, if we get to me, that'd be great. How about you just take the vocab terms down when you're writing your notes? Then you just copy and paste it over like the bell rings in your notes. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, you write it down. Good. Can you read it okay? We're starting off with the independent view of self. The last one on the board. I had more than this, but I don't know if we'll get to it or not since it's close already. Does it? So we're having fun. History. Why? I don't really like the people. I don't like people. Well, I don't want to be the big problem. You would. It's because of rules. I have my seat. Not only do I have to see you in school, but now they hunt next to the land. Yeah, their name would be the exact same. Yeah, okay. They got married, and she said, wait, they actually wouldn't last. It's spelled though. different, though, isn't it? It's spelled differently. Yeah, yeah, but still, same. What if they have, like, a boy and a girl? Peyton and Peyton. Peyton and Peyton. 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 Keep going. Yeah. Or Peyton. Peyton. It's to the fourth. You can't say anything. Yeah, you can't say anything. Peyton to the fourth. Well, yeah, there you go. Roy, what would it be called then? Peyton Quad. There is no word like for it's, that. It's <clears throat> squared and it's mutual. And then there's nothing. To the four. Yeah. Yeah. Carrot. Yeah. Two. I don't like that one. What? What did you think of any of those? Uh, that first assignment took me an hour to read. What was it DBQ? <laughs> no, it yeah. was literally three just assignments. It took me forever to read. I was doing it for over an hour for the first assignment. Gee, dang it. There was like four different sets of questions. I don't right. know. I don't right. took this in uh, college, the Looking Glass Show. You ever hear that song? Looking at you through the glass. That's weird. Oh, yeah, I've been inside. You know what? I got that. That's all that matters. Hey, that's all that matters. I just took a lot of breaks. Okay, so why do we need to know about Henry's George? Because there's two different viewpoints on the view. Why they should keep learning about? Because that's part of the. That's part of it. You learn about the Gilded Age. It's the most boring period. It is not. John Rockefeller. Do you, think, you didn't know? I didn't, I didn't know that. No, I did. I had to do a project on Oprah before. Tony Stark. I'm not joking. You guys good? No. One more minute. One more minute. Oh, yeah. What were you doing back there? 
watching Spider-Man trailers? Good. I just like the way it looks better. My hand raised. You good now? It's hard to do the people. I don't know. All right. So I know we talked about groups and in institutions before uh, with roles and statuses, ascribed statuses. You remember talking about that? Yeah. Okay. So most sociologists agree that there are really six primary agents of socialization. Okay, what really has, well, what really develops us as people, the characteristics, personalities, um, and you can look across the world and most people are very similar. I guess in the United States, it might be a little bit different because there's a hodgepodge of everything here in the US. But uh, in most cases, the agents of socialization are all very similar. And primary group, primary agent is family. That's number one. Okay, family. And uh, we can all agree to that. We all have family aspects and cultural ties that uh, maybe you're a little bit different from family to family. Right, Roy? Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. But yeah, uh, every family might have a different, I guess you'd say, routine or scheduling on certain events. And it's interesting, to say the least. I know with my girlfriend, we go to her carnival all the time. And she's a big Polak, so... I was introduced to a bunch of different foods, like pigeons. You guys ever have a pigeon before? No. Not an I actual mean, pigeon. It's like ground beef wrapped up in like cabbage with salsa. No, thank you. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. At first, I was like, I don't know about this, but I like it. I like it. <clears throat> yeah, it's not bad. Sauerkraut. I'm sure you guys, oh, yeah. pork and sauerkraut. Yeah. And then you talk to Eddie. He has tamales for Thanksgiving. Cool. cool. Yeah, school. That's a good one. School's for fools. Look at me. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, school is a great place for socialization where we find peer groups, friend groups, and join activities, extracurricular, extracurricular activities that we associate ourselves with and uh, maybe associate a firm bond with one another through that. And I'm sure we can all show an aspect of different schools around here and almost stereotype them to somewhat of their upbringing, their background. I know when I grew up, every time we're maybe behind, start the tractors, instead of the buses, you know, since we're from Tri-Valley, start the tractors. Oh, cool, good one. We're all farmers over here, I guess. Not really, but anyway, we can all kind of associate that. Blue Mount was always a preppy kids, these rich kids down the line, all work as doctors and lawyers, you name it. All right, peer groups. Okay, I kind of associated that with school already. So different types of extracurricular activities we might join in and get involved in and uh, maybe stuff that we're belonging to. Maybe like a political group, who knows? Work. Work is a great place where we socialize. I know uh, uh, my summer job especially, I learned a few things mechanically with my mower that I've been really stressing out with as of late. And these are some things where I associate and bond with people that I may not have ever talked to before. I know one of my one friends that I work with, he's a huge trapper. I'm not big into trapping. Sometimes I think it's a little sad for the coyotes and foxes that he, he traps and he uh, gets them and, oh, tears them up then. Oh gosh, it's crazy, it's crazy. What's that? Yeah. I well, he traps them and shoots at them, but yeah, he gets it for the fur. You should see his, uh, his uh, shop, though. He has furs all across. He usually catches around 100 fox a year. That's his goal. And coyotes. Yeah. Huh? Coyotes. Well, I feel like if you see him around, you can shoot him anywhere here. 
shoot. Yeah, yeah. My brother shot one not too long ago. It's pretty cool. I got the pie and everything. It's pretty neat. But yeah, like I was saying, again, would I associate him outside of work? Would I have ever met him? Do we have the same interests? No, but we kind of grew a bond. We actually went to see the Spider-Man movie. It was pretty cool. Yeah, when it first came out, Homecoming. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. We brought his kids along. It was a good time. Uh, mass media, definitely a form of socialization, as even more so today, depending on what news station you watch, what type of media you get involved in, is shaping who we are, right? Uh, unfortunately, it's pitting against people against each other sometimes, especially with politics, but for the most part, mass media is a great form of socialization. And then finally, religion. Probably saw that coming from a mile away. Religion. Religion. Again, nurture aspect of sociology, okay? Where we uh, where we around our environment, depending on what type of people we're around or interest groups, okay, how we socialize, how we come together. But anyway, make sure you guys remember these agents of socialization. I think it's important. And again, many sociologists believe that these six impacts, these primary groups are, again, focused with that. All right, so we talk about the nurture. I'm gonna just move past this since we already mentioned it. It's just really going along the lines of diet, nutrition, and really your environment. What's, what, what's your background, your, your upbringing, okay? And how genetics, yeah, that plays a huge role, but nurture does as well, okay? And kind of with that feral child, uh, what we were talking about, feral children, what we were talking about last week was some of those readings and their upbringings and how that can really affect someone just with interaction alone, just with environment alone. But anyway, independent view of self, okay? So as we're getting involved with soci uh, socialization, it's important to know like exactly what people think and view and uh, how their personality, how their characteristics maybe are shaped from what they think of themselves and maybe what they think others view themselves as. So independent view of self is a way of defining oneself in terms of one's own internal thoughts, feelings, and actions, not in terms of thoughts, feelings, and actions of other people. So this is internal, what you believe yourself really is. Okay. So Again, uh, this, is my, this might be the way you associate yourselves to other people, uh, but this is how you feel about yourself and what you think your characteristics, your personalities reflect um, and, and, and represent. Okay, it might be totally different of let's say someone else's viewpoint of yourself, but again, this is what you believe yourself as. A lot of times when you're describing yourself to other people, you're very humble about it, right? So Madden, how would you describe yourself? You'd say a softball player, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Are there softball players that are way more talented and skilled than you? Would you go up to them, that person, and say, I'm a softball player? Or would you just be more humble about it? It's like, hey, I know your attributes. I know your skill level. I know your talent. I'm just here on the team. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's a good example, right? Uh, depending on who you're presenting yourself to, you might have a totally different depiction of who you are, okay? You might describe where you're from rather than actually uh, some of what you think your, your personal thoughts and feelings are about yourself. That's a good example. That's a good example. I know a lot of times when I go to wrestling tournaments, I'm like, oh, this guy would definitely whoop my butt. Like, I never achieved anything like this guy here. So I'm not going to just go up and say, hey, I'm, I'm at the same level of talent and skill as you. Know, this never would happen. Just because, again, I just know myself is not being comparable to him. But that goes along with the next view of self, the inter interdependent. So this is a way of defining oneself in terms of one's relationships to other people, recognizing that one's behavior is often determined by the thoughts, feelings, and actions of others. So again, if you're in a group, depending on where you're at, okay, this is my, how, you, how you describe yourself depending on what viewpoints of other people think of you. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, you're not thinking of yourself, you're thinking of other viewpoints of yourself, right? And that's kind of going along the lines of what I was saying earlier, Tegan, when, when you said about how babies are just staring at it. It's like, why are you staring at me? It's making me uncomfortable. It's like, why are they staring at me? It's making me like, obviously, uh, cause, a, cause some conflict here. I'm going to throw this baby off the wall if it keeps staring at me like this. What's it thinking? What's it thinking? Well, again, uh, this is this viewpoint of what that other person thinks of us and how these personalities, these behaviors might be totally different. In an uncomfortable situation, you might act totally different around someone else rather than uh, obviously maybe a friend or 
a relationship partner, whatever. I know I get that all the time. Whenever I'm with my best friend from college, my girlfriend's like, you act totally different. You're like, a, you're like a teenager in a way. It's like, I don't know. It brings the best out of me, I guess. And she goes, what did you say? I'm going to slap in the face there. Yeah. But she gets annoyed. She doesn't like when he visits all the time. Sometimes, not all the time. All right, so major theorists of self. We're going to talk about these two guys. And, hmm, well, we'll get through one. So Charles Cooley and George Meade. George Meade sounds like a Civil War general, doesn't it? because well, it was one, I guess, but not this guy. All right, so we're going to talk about your uh, Cooley first and how it's described as a looking glass cell. A looking glass cell. All right, so Cooley, believe that we learn who we are through our interactions with others. The phase looking glass cell emphasizes the point of three phases. So this is like you're looking in a mirror. Okay, and you're trying to think of someone else's viewpoint of yourself, right? You're trying to describe your characteristics, your personality, your behaviors of really just someone else's viewpoint. Is it right all the time? Maybe not, right? Maybe you should have a little bit more pride or more uh, uh, some emotion about yourself and thought and, uh, and really just care less of what others think. But again, for Cooley, that's exactly what he thinks uh, many people try to shape their personality and their characteristics of themselves as. So phase one, we imagine how we present ourselves to others. So we're thinking before we act, right? I'm sure you heard of that of really uh, from your parents or your mentors or your coaches all the time. Make sure you guys think before you act, right? Make sure you guys obviously look in the mirror before you say something uh, because words can't be pulled back in. But again, this is how we're trying to shape ourselves and other persons, other people's viewpoints. Phase two, we imagine how others evaluate us. Attractive, funny, strange. And that goes along the lines of really our, the jokes that we say, maybe. Uh, maybe how we dress. Maybe how we talk. How we try to communicate with others. Okay? And that's a great example, especially with our attire, of what we dress. Okay? Obviously, when we go to church, we're going to dress up pretty nice. When we're lounging around the house, maybe with our best friends, we might wear some sweatpants and hang out, depending on the environment, right? So again, that's just how we imagine ourselves to value. And finally, phase three, develop feelings, shame, pride based on these. There you go. We'll see you guys later. Looking glass cell. Don't forget it. Drink Miller milk. All right.